ladies and gentlemen on this video I'm gonna try something new that may be fun and it's gonna be very challenging for me to do and I'm gonna call this the news speed round which means that I'm gonna go through all of the articles that I find interest in on any given day but I'm not really going to dig deep into them I'm just gonna give you maybe a minute or two at the most of commentary on that specific article but first I have to cover something that's very important in a way I'm very happy of how this turned out and in a way I'm disappointed in myself but it's just human nature and it's who I am ladies and gentlemen and I'm so glad that this is not true a few days ago I put out a video uh, telling everyone that you know I've been getting a lot of messages either email and also during the comments and even during the live I even had a friend contact me and told me that Goshen Prepper was talking bad stuff about me which really surprised me because I really really like that channel but first let me tell you before I even continue that he was not he put out a video pretty much saying he doesn't know where I got this information but the fact of the matter is is that I've been contacted by more than one person telling me hey this person left a comment here or there I'm not the kind of person that really just likes to spend a lot of time researching that kind of stuff. But I had gotten so many different people contact me and tell me about this that I was like, well, man, maybe I should just say something about this. Not something uh, deprecating Goshen Prepper because I really don't know him and his family. I know he's got a great channel and he also has, I'm not sure if he's taken it down yet, but I think that he did a great small channel about what his family does, a blog like that, which he took down. Let me tell you what I think happened after looking at everything. I think that someone or more than one person tried to attack Goshen Prepper by telling different YouTubers, I can't confirm this, but at least by telling me that Goshen Prepper was up to no good saying bad things. That's what I think, ladies and gentlemen. I am very gullible by nature because I love humanity and I always like to give humanity the benefit of the doubt. So I want to personally hear publicly apologize to Goshen Prepper and his family all right, I want to apologize to you, sir, because I should have looked into it more. I was getting so many messages that I was like, man, this has to be true. You know, and at first I was like saying, ah, don't worry about it. I think I even emailed someone back and told them, hey, listen, everyone is entitled to their own opinion, etc., etc. And I'm not even going to bother spending time, but I should have looked into it more before saying anything. So to that, ladies and gentlemen, I apologize. I consider myself being wrong for saying anything before I dug into it more so than what I did. All right, so everything is good. Thank you, Goshen Prepper, for understanding and thank you for coming out and doing what you did. You're a good man. I've always thought that you're a good man and you have a great family. What these guys are laughing about should be something that really worries every single American in addition to a lot of other nations that use the dollar as their currency. And again, we need to forgive, ladies and gentlemen, but not forget. Don't ever forget what it is that I was going to say of the American people, but not just the American people, but that the people of the world had to go through over the last three or so years with the juicy juice and the health crisis. More and more lockdown experts are admitting that they were wrong, and now they're begging for forgiveness. But why? I thought that the science was settled. I will leave the link to these articles that I cover here on a pinned comment so that you can come revisit them on your own time, ladies and gentlemen, but let's go on to the next one. And check this out, Arizona's governor demands $512 million be reimbursed for border security failure. This Arizona governor, and I won't even mention her name because I don't think personally, personally, that she should be in office, fired off a scathing letter to President Biden on Friday in which she demanded $512 million, ladies and gentlemen, of your taxpayer funds uh, in reimbursements for money that the state spent trying to control the U.S. and Mexico border.
She also asked this administration to immediately reassign the National Guard to the most vulnerable border regions in order to stem the flow of migrants into the United States. I thought that the governor has control of their own National Guard. Why are they asking the federal government, i.e. all of the American people, for their tax dollars to control a problem that they themselves created? And as governors are asking this administration for money for border security, Judge blocks Biden administration from destroying Texas border fencing. We live in opposite world, ladies and gentlemen, where we have governors from the same party side asking for money for security to an administration that is willfully wanting to destroy the security of our nation between our border and another nation's border. I'm not sure if you've noticed, ladies and gentlemen, but in the last couple of years since this administration took over, we've had nearly 10 million illegal border crossings. Where do you think those people are going? But more importantly, who are they and where are they? What are their intentions? I'm sure that a lot of them, if not most of them, just want a better life. But what about those that want to cause harm to these United States of America and more importantly, to the people that live in it? Brits should stock up on candles and battery powered radios in case a power meltdown cripples digital gadgets, Deputy Prime Minister Oliver Dowden warns. So more and more governments are coming forth and telling their people to prepare. But why now? That's the question. Why now, ladies and gentlemen? What do they know that we don't know? I have a very easy solution to this. Get prepared and stay prepared. Don't count on your government to tell you what to do and when you need to do it, ladies and gentlemen. Do you want to be free or not? If you are your own person, you should want to be prepared to make sure that you will be okay during times of crises, but more importantly, that your family will be okay. Are you the head of a household? Do you want your family to have food just in case something happens where the dollar is worthless? Or as simple as if you lose a job and you can't afford to buy food for two or three months, but hey, guess what? I have a pantry full of food that I can feed my family with, and that's one less thing that I have to worry about while I'm looking for another job. Or it can be something as drastic as what's happening around the world. That war actually finds our shores here or the shores of the country that you live in. Something big is about to go down. Multiple confirming signals point to a cyber takedown of the financial system. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I talked about this on today's video, so go check that out if you haven't seen it. But this financial system by which the world is being governed right now, and that is the Federal Reserve Note, because the Federal Reserve Note is the world reserve currency. That fiat currency will eventually be devalued to nothing, just like every single fiat currency in the history of mankind has done so it has been devalued to nothing why because government's solution is more government and eventually government will run out of other people's money simple as that ladies and gentlemen so protect yourselves do what you know that you will need to do for the day when your dollars are not going to buy you anything but remember also that when that does happen the same government that put you in this predicament is going to say hey we're going to fix everything and we're going to hook you up with a cbdc which is going to be a tool that will be used to completely enslave humanity and or anyone that decides to use it. I don't even know why Al Gore is still significant, but he says that people having access, listen to this, this is how sick these people who want to be our rulers are, ladies and gentlemen. Al Gore says that people having access to non-mainstream information, meaning like social media, like what you're listening to right now, they threaten democracy. So people being able to hear what they want to listen to, that threatens democracy. What does that tell you? It tells you that it's their way or the highway, that your thoughts don't matter, just do what you're told. Well, guess what, ladies and gentlemen, I'm looking outside my window right now, and there's still snow everywhere. I thought that by the year 2000, snow was going to be a thing of the past. But if you still believe that, ladies and gentlemen, then God bless you. You better prepare more than anyone else.
Now check this out, ladies and gentlemen. This is a site from the United States Capitol Police, right? And it says USCP statement on the unlawful demonstration outside the DNC back in early to mid-November. Last night, approximately 200 people, now this is them saying on their website, gathered in front of the DNC headquarters to protest the conflict that's happening in the Middle East. I believe you understand what conflict that is. That's the one that started on October 7th on a Saturday. And from what I understand and watching some of the videos of this demonstration that was held outside the DNC, it was not very, well, let's say that it was just not very peaceful. And the reason that I bring this up, ladies and gentlemen, is because I am very certain, and I mean, we can take a look at this a year from now, that none of these 200 people, which I am very certain were captured on either video or their identity is known to the authorities, will spend any time in jail, at least any significant time. And that is why I say that we live in a two-tier justice system. Not only a two-tier justice system that involves those that are in the 1% and those that are not, but also a two-tier justice system that involves those that want to push the narrative and those that are being used as the enforcers to push that narrative. And of course, it wasn't a very peaceful demonstration if people from the DMC had to actually be evacuated by police. And here's another great example, ladies and gentlemen, that we have a two-tier justice system, only a $500 fine and no jail time for Bravo Lima Mike, people that were not doing very great things on the outside, who set Atlanta's Wendy's on fire in 2020. And of course, we do know that some of those that were involved in the J6 uh, are still in jail awaiting trial. What kind of justice is that? It's pretty disgusting, really, to say that we live in the freest nation in the world. And look at this, what's going on, where we have political prisoners within our own walls. Where you really can't talk freely, ladies and gentlemen. Someone like me, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a nobody. I'm not known to anyone. Right? I have a very small YouTube channel that not many people know about. I can pretty much say anything I want, and the only worry that I would have is probably to get demonetized or something like that. That would be my biggest worry. But if you reach a certain level in society where you have a lot of people that you can influence, that you can talk to, and they'll, and they'll follow you, like Elon Musk, for example, that's when they really start being tough on you. Republican actors house raided, and now he's been arrested for being at the Capitol, for being there. On J6. Is that freedom? Now this should really worry you. This says America next. Brazil cuts welfare payments for families of kids who don't get the now for Brazil annual juicy juice. Think about that ladies and gentlemen. Think about all of the people around the world of a certain age group really that are falling over and expiring, meaning that they're no longer on this physical earth, right? They're no longer walking around. And a lot of the blame goes to, well, some people say that a lot of the blame goes to maybe the juicy juice. I'm not a doctor or anything like that, right? But just think for yourselves. And think of how many people have expired in the last few years that they never had any problems, any physical health problems or anything like that. And they just, they're no longer here. And they all have one thing in common. And one thing that I hope we never have in common, ladies and gentlemen, is that we have a CBDC. Brazil's CBDC pilot program allows the government to freeze funds at just balances at a will. Goodness gracious, Stalin, Mao, the little man with the mustache, you know, Mussolini, all of these people, Castro, these people are now flipping over in their graves saying, goodness gracious, why could I not have had that when I was ruling as a dictator? Incredible, ladies and gentlemen. This will be the end, but in my opinion, if this does happen, that we have a CBDC worldwide or even within our nation here in the United States of America or Western nation, I believe that it will only be for a short time because people will very quickly realize that nothing is free and that what they've given up for their welfare or for their UBI and that CBDC and all the promises that the government made them has cost them all of their liberties. 
it has come to our attention that the new Brazilian central bank digital currency system contains hidden backdoor features allowing the Brazilian government to freeze people's funds and adjust their balances at will. You know what that means, adjust your balance at will? It means that your labor is no longer yours. Because, for example, let's say that you worked for $100. You did this or that for $100. It goes into your CBDC, right? Into your wallet, electronic wallet. So you worked, let's say, five hours for that $100. So you made $20 an hour. Now, let's say that the government comes along and they say, we're going to reduce that $100 to $50. What's your labor worth? You never know what your labor is worth. You thought you knew what it was worth. You thought it was worth $20 an hour. But now, according to the government, that $100 that you earned for working five hours, making 20 bucks an hour, is no longer 100 bucks. It's now 50. So in this system, no one will know what their labor is worth. And only those that toe the line will be able to spend those credits, ladies and gentlemen. Is this really what you want? The people in Brazil are starting to find out now that, hey, this may not be a good idea because I have to allow them to do whatever they want to do with my labor. Because that money in that wallet represents your labor, ladies and gentlemen. That is what a fiat currency note today represents. It's the number of minutes or hours that it took you to earn it. And now they're gonna be able to do whatever they want with that. And just take a look at this for yourselves, ladies and gentlemen. It's all out there. It's just that it's not being allowed to be talked about on mainstream media. Right? Eventually, we will see so much of this that no one will be able to hide it. Now, having said that, I hope that you're proud of me. I think I did pretty good as far as going through these in a quick manner. And I will leave the link for these on a pinned comment so that you can revisit them, ladies and gentlemen. But having said that, if you didn't see my video from earlier today, go check it out. I think that you will get a lot out of it and you will be able to better prepare having watched that. In addition to that, if you didn't check out the video that I put out last Friday about three, I think it was Saturday that I put it out, about three things that you should always have in your vehicle. It was kind of like a glorified review video of three things that I think you ought to have in your vehicle and that are just really cool stuff. I hope that you have a great rest of your day, ladies and gentlemen. God bless every one of you. God bless America. I'm Alaska Prepper. I'm out.